Want to get some free performance from your new 4070 Ti? Check this out. Now it is time to overclock this bad boy. I have been toiling away with GPU tweak all week long to try and overclock this thing. Um, let's use, let's do Cyberpunk um, to show off the performance. Ooh, so yeah. Cyberpunk, yeah. So we use this when we were overclocking the um, 4090. And it's just, I mean, this game is really just uh, uses your GPU to the fullest. And so it's a, it's a good stress test when overclocking. Um, this is not going to be a detailed overclocking guide for beginners, but I'll show you how I got the results I got with this card and talk a little bit about the benchmarks I used. Um, the, the benchmarks you use with, you got to use more than one with a GPU, right? So I'm going to show off Cyberpunk here, but I also ran a bunch of rounds of Superposition uh, from Unigen. That's a great benchmark. You can run into 8K and it will just peg the crap out of your GPU. Um, uh, some people like Furmark. Their, Furmark is fun if you want to test like the maximum heat output of your card, but it's not, um, not going to test the maximum clock, so it's not always uh, the best stress test for determining the stability of your overclock. Uh, I'm running at ultra settings, by the way, here at 1440p ultra wide with ray tracing on Psycho, because why not? Um, and I use uh, 3D Mark Times by Extreme, like we were looking at earlier, because that actually gives me a score, and sometimes it's helpful to see how much the performance is increasing or decreasing. You can do that with the frames per second here too as well. But um, And you can run time spy on a loop, which is also really nice. You cannot do that with the pay, uh, unless you have the paid version of Superposition, which I don't have, but I paid. I got 3D Mark for like five bucks on sale once. So not bad. Um, that's a really good stress test. So um, we'll be using this as an example. This is our stock performance. No changes to the card whatsoever. You can see our GPU is being pegged. We are getting 30 frames per second because it's the Cyberpunk benchmark. And that's what it does. <laughs> Um, and it's it's choppy, and that's that's just how it's going right now. It is, and part of that is going to be the video capture. It's a little bit less choppy in person, but it's it's not, you know, it's not the frame rate that I would like to play at. But again, that's not what we're doing. We're not um, trying to give you a representative sample of what you would play at. We're trying to peg this GPU as hard as humanly possible, um, and and test the performance at that level. Um, sometimes you can do that with other smoother games at like uncapped frame rates, but um, I want to test ray tracing and stuff like that as well um just to make sure that this card is is using the power uh, the way it would be used in the games the way i want to play them and i am using ray tracing more often in the games that i play now because we have cards that can do that yeah <laughs> all right so uh this average fps is a little bit lower um probably than what i got this week when i was testing so i'll kind of describe both um 32.01 average that's really what we're concerned with here uh again because i'm doing all this video capture and stuff like that it's going to be using up cpu and some and and just to clarify he, he's recording sending this over discord i'm capturing his discord and then sending that over twitch so this is going through a few extra tubes which but... is why it's choppy <laughs> yeah 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 that's a little bit to that but a few extra tubes the internet is a series of tubes it is so all right that is stock performance. I'm going to minimize uh, this for the moment. So in an overclocking situation, what, what you would first do is start by taking this power target and mm -hmm. taking that to max. Uh, let's do temperature target because I don't care. Um, and uh, let's just put voltage to the max too. Now, if you did this, you would get a few extra percent right out of the gate. And we showed this with our 4090 stream mm -hmm. uh, as well. I'm not going to like benchmark that today um, because I... You've already done that. I want to show a more traditional kind of overclock here, especially because um, with the 4090, like you're already at such a high level of performance. I'm actually more interested in undervolting that card with this. I want to see how much we can, much more we can get out of it. So uh, you're going to kind of live in this little area and GPU tweak here. You can kind of monitor the card's performance over here. Um, you basically just kind of end up bumping this up by like 50 megahertz. So like tw uh, 28, 28, 10. Right, um, and kind of would apply that here. You would run a benchmark, and if it's stable, uh, it doesn't crash. You don't see any artifacting on screen, like little glitches in the image. Uh, then you come back and you bump it right back up. Keep doing that. So I got this up to twenty nine ten. Okay. Uh, before I started seeing issues, so I bumped it up to twenty nine thirty, um, and I would. 
I didn't really see any artifacts in the benchmarks, but I did get a couple of crashes when I was testing Spider-Man. Huh. So the thing about, uh, uh, so I'm gonna overclock the memory as well, and then we'll benchmark and see kind of our final results, but I'm gonna talk a little bit about how this works. With the GPU clock, it's pretty easy. Um, but once you kind of dial in that GPU clock, you know, like I hit 2030 and I, 2930 and I saw some crashes. I think I, when I hit 2960, like the benchmark was crashing right away. Right. Um, so you or, were or like, all right, right away. you kind of figured so out. So I dialed it, I dialed it back to 2930 yeah. and then played games for a few days and it crashed a few times at 2930. So I backed it off a little bit more. Sometimes you won't see issues in your benchmarks, especially if you're not running them for like an hour or two. Um, and you'll have to kind of play games for a little bit to determine whether your overclock was truly stable. So I don't recommend doing any memory overclocking until you know that your core clock is stable. And here's why. Memory overclocking is really finicky. And it is really, really hard to determine the ideal level. Some people don't even mess with it anymore. I like to do it a little bit. So I recommend dialing in your GPU core overclock. And then living with that for like a week, okay? And gaming with it. And if you don't experience any crashes, you don't experience any artifacting, uh, you don't experience any weird glitches where the computer just shuts down or something like that, then you can be reasonably sure that that's stable. Then you can move on to memory overclocking. Um, when you're memory overclocking, look for the same artifacts on screen, watch out for crashes. Sometimes uh, when you overclock memory to a certain level, it'll produce the same crashes or artifacts that the core clock will. Sometimes it's not so clear. Sometimes symptom of um, uh, overclocking the memory too high is um, that the memory is going to encounter errors during rendering a scene. And uh, it'll correct those errors so you won't notice any issues on screen. But what you will notice is that performance may actually dip down, right? So keep an eye on your frame rates, especially those minimum frame rates, right? Um, write them down as you're overclocking the memory. And if you reach a point where like your minimum frame rates start going down again, dial it back to the peak and maybe actually dial it back a little bit further than that. And that's probably around where you wanna be. Um, I actually found that I had to do multiple runs of superposition to kind of dial in that point. And frankly, I could probably still dial in the memory further. And actually I haven't played with this particular value long enough to know if it's gonna cause any issues, but this is, I can be reasonably sure that the memory is stable where it is. I have some people, I've seen some people overclock this card a little bit higher already, but when I tried that, my performance dipped just a tiny bit, and so I backed off. So we have 33.86 frames per second here, and I'm gonna do a quick calculation, even though this is um, not the best example, because again, I'm doing this video capture. Uh, I should get a second capture card, and next time we do this, <laughs> maybe it'll be a, a little bit better. 33.86. So that is about a 6% improvement. Um, when I was overclocking it without the video capture, I saw a little bit more, like 7%. And that, again, is over the stock performance of this factory overclocked card. Mm. So remember, this card is already overclocked. If you're comparing it to the stock performance of like the non-overclocked version, if you were to overclock it to this level, it would be more like a 9 or 10% boost um, over stock performance. So that is not bad. Um, for not too much work. Once you start doing the memory, it becomes a little bit more work, right? Um, and it depends on how much we wanna put in. If you wanted to just do the GPU boost clock, um, spend a couple hours doing that and then be done, uh, it's free performance, right? Um, if you wanna put in a little bit more time and dial in a memory clock, you will get a little bit more out of that. Um, I, I noticed actually more, more boosts from overclocking the memory than, than usual with the 4070 Ti. So I do think it is worth checking out, although it, it can be a little bit frustrating if you're not used to um, overclocking uh, VRAM. There are other... There are other VRAM tests out there, like OCCT has a VRAM test, but that's not really going to tell you whether your uh, memory is stable or not. It can't, it, it, it's really only monitoring like if you have a bad chip, it's not going to detect like whether you've overclocked the memory too far or not. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend, you can run it, but I wouldn't recommend it as um, a stress testing measure for overclocking the RAM. But those are our results for overclocking the 4070 Ti. That is not bad. I will take like a seven to 10 performance boost any day for free. Um, you can also undervolt it. I haven't played with that a ton because um, 
again, I just didn't have time to do everything. And more people said they wanted to see overclocking yeah. uh, than power scaling when we uh, polled people on our Discord. By the way, join our Discord. It's awesome. We have lots of cool stuff going on in there. And we have lots of really cool plans for the Discord uh, this year. So I, uh, that's, that's basically everything that I wanted to talk about. Um, use as many different stress tests as you can. Write everything down. Take good notes. And you can dial in a pretty good overclock pretty quickly. To see more of our hands-on coverage, check out the full stream in the description below. And as always, subscribe to us here on YouTube and check out our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash asusrog.